What up everybody, going over a deck profile for Katakuri, a yellow leader here. With him, if you add one Dawn and you're attacking, you can look at the top life card of you or your opponent and either leave it at the top or move it to the bottom. It adds 1k to your power when you're swinging. If there are no life cards, it still adds 1k power. You don't actually have to check, it's just a plus. Start us off here running for the Shard of the Pudding. She is a searcher card, so she looks at the top four cards of the deck and she is looking for a Big Mom Pirates card or a Sanji card, and that can be put to your hand. The rest go to the bottom of the the deck in any order of your choosing. She's also a 1k counter, 2k power. We also have Onami. She's new to OPO6. She applies Banish when you are using her. So when you play her on the field, you can choose a card, whether it be your leader or a character, and say that they can Banish. What that means is if they attack the opponent's leader and they successfully hit them, the life cards from your opponent go directly to the trash, not to their hand. Pretty crazy. Has a crazy trigger. KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. So it's kind of like Thunderbolt in that effect. So pretty crazy. Here we have Pair of Sparrow. He is a three drop and 5k power. If he is KO'd, you are able to look at the top three cards of your deck. You're, again, you're looking for a Big Mom Pirates card. Only difference here between this and Pudding is that when you're searching, you can't just grab a Sanji. Capone Beige, this is the most famous trigger card where he is able to stop one of your opponent's characters from attacking or their leader. So it's a really big deal. Next one is a 2k counter. Counter, you could run Struis in, you could run a number of 2k counters. Charlotte Amon is the one I run. Main purpose for her, for me, is just as a 2k counter. No trigger there. Sanji, so he is also a trigger card where you discard a card from your hand if you get him off life and you can play him to your field. He is a little bit better than Brule because he has 5k power, but with Brule, you don't have to discard a card from your hand, but with him, he seems to come in clutch a lot of times because he gives you that swinging power on your next turn. Otherwise, just use him as a blocker if you need to, you know, if you're toward the end of the game. Really good card. Kikunojo. So she is new and this is a four drop 6k power. She triggers off your life if your opponent has three life or less. With her, if she is taken out and your opponent has that three life or less, you add a card from your deck over to your life. So with her being four, I typically don't want her on the field if, I, if my opponent has, you know, say like four life because I want to get the bonus out of her, which is that extra life. We have the classic Satori here from OPO5, 2k counter. You have to discard a card from your hand if it triggers off life, but a really strong card. It's 5 drop, 5k power. I typically would not play this for 5 dawn. I would just play it off um, life or use it as counter. We have Gadatsu, so this is the alt of him. He's really good, so with him you KO one of your opponent's characters on their board. That is its cost is equal to your your opponent's life. So let's say your opponent has like three life cards and they have a character that has a, that's a three cost. You can just pop it right to their trash unless there's something that is protecting it, which could be, you know, some cards, but not that many. Okay, we have Charlotte Lin Lin, big mom, and she is from the starter deck seven. With her, when you play her on the field, your opponent has to choose. Either they lose one of their life cards or they grant you a life card. That can be something that can win you a game because if they take away their own life card and then you get a surprise trigger, you can take them out. And then we have our big old body here, the Charlotte Lin Lin. And she is the 10 drop, a scary monster, big boss. With her, you rest 10 Dawn, put her on the field. So you add a card from your deck over to your life and your opponent loses the life directly to their trash. We have Amaru, which people usually refer to this card as Amaru, but 200 million volts. With this, when you play for two, on you can add 3k power to either your leader or one of your characters if you have one life and one of your opponent's cards is a four cost typically being like borsalino some kind of blocker you can rest it so you can bypass that blocker and attack your opponent's leader so it's really good when you have one life otherwise if you need to use it earlier you can you may do so just to add that 3k power to a swing as a trigger you can discard two cards from your hand and then add one card from your deck over to your life so you can add another life. Next, Reject. Reject is getting banned in June. I would use it while it's able to be used. You can KO a character that has five cost or less and as an effect that works on most characters that can't defend against it. Something like Borsalino, obviously, you, 
you can't do that. Sometimes it can help you clear a board if you need to. Also, if your opponent has one life and you lay this down for four dawn, it takes away their life and it adds a card from your life over to your hand. I don't usually use this as a trigger because it just draws a card, but this is the deck list. So I run four ofs of the majority of these cards. This is probably the most simplistic deck list I use. And I do change it up. Sometimes I will use eight cost Katakuris, the new, there's a new zero cost event card that adds 3k to your power. With this, your ideal curve, the curve is just how many dawn you have on each given turn. So let's say you're on turn one and you have one dawn, you're going first. You could play your pudding. If it's turn two and you have three dawn, you can do a uh, pair sparrow or sparrow and swing with him the following turn. You could run uh, two puddings instead and search for a higher power card or something else. Five dawn turn, turn three. Godatsu is really good. This is something you want to watch how much life they have so if they have a character that's like say they have five life four life sometimes you hold back from swinging with um your leader because you want to get out to one of their characters you could also drop a kikunojo if they are down to three life and a pudding to search turn four we have charlotte linlin and this is the case seven dawn your opponent gets that choice whether or not they lose a life or you gain a life again kikunojo and sparrow nine dawn could do Lin land again or you could do something and you could you know run puddings attached on to your leader to cat a curry to swing for higher power you could have kikunojo gadatsu a lot of different possibilities for this one typically though for like turn five gadatsu is not going to have a lot of positive effect on your board except for he's a 6k swing okay turn six the odd curve then i would definitely do big mom if you found her with your puddings or if you got her in hand or you could do something like seven cost big mom sparrow a lot of different possibilities there as well okay let's say you are on an even curve so if turn one you're get, you're gonna have two uh dawn i would do the two pudding or pass and then you go to your next one because you can't attack on your first turn go to your next one you could do the sparrow pudding you could do kick nojo turn three six dawn you have Kiratsu, pudding kick nojo pudding and again there, there are other cards you could do but these are the ones that that's kind of an ideal curve turn four lin lin Pudding, search for your big mom if you can get her before turn five, or Gadatsu, Kikunojo, and then turn five, big mom, or your Lin Lin and a Sparrow. So those are for me, those are most my most ideal curves to shoot for. Other cards here to consider. This is the one I was thinking of. So you're the one who should disappear. This is a counter card for zero cost. But when you use it, you do have to discard a card from your hand, but you still add 3k. You can also use it as a trigger. If you have zero life, you can add add another life over to your, your life area. You have any of these cards. So Katakuri manipulates cards, moves them off the field, um, adding to life, depending maybe you're going up against a kid and you want to move him or you want to move something on your side. Let's say you're running Shirohoshi, which is a searcher in the bottom right. Really good searcher. You could put her back on top of your life. A lot of possibilities. If you want to go more like aggro, you want to attack faster, you could run this Katakuri, the four, four drop, 6k attacker. He works though if your opponent has more life than you. Then he gains rush, so he can attack right away. Seven drop Anel, rush, Hiyori, really good, OPL6. She allows you to switch out your life card and put a different card from your hand there so you can set up your triggers. A Monosuke, he will take a uh, Wano card and add it to your life. So he manipulates life as well. He's a really good blocker, doesn't have a trigger, kind of the same with Hiori, but they're still very good cards if you're running that uh, Wano package. If you're running the Sky Island package, which are the cards like Ohm, Holy, Anel, anything in Sky Island, you should run Shura because then you can search with Shura. And with that, you definitely do something like Yamato, typically with Katakuri, you're not going to be running Yamato. These are just different possibilities. And Brulee, our other starter deck seven, she's good because as a blocker, uh, she comes out free as a trigger. You don't have to discard a card from hand. So let's get into the gameplay. So with this game, I went first and I played Pudding as a searcher. This is a mirror match and he's running Katakuri as well. So I searched the top four and this is one thing I want to know. I forgot that with her, you can also take a Sanji card and because he's Vinsmoke. I just, I would have taken Sanji 
But since I forgot that, I ended up taking a different card, which was a seven drop Lin Lin. And I pass to my opponent. So he draws and he puts the two down out for his turn. And he passes. So my turn, I draw, put out two more Dawn. I have three Dawn. You might want to wait and see about that one, buddy, because <laughs> <laughs> kind of going on here. <laughs> I swing 5k at lead. So five lead at Katakuri. He's going to take his life. And I believe no trigger. Now, even if it is a trigger, there are cases where you don't want to say that. And I attach three Dawn to Pudding because I didn't re really have anything else to do. So I swing 5k at lead with Pudding. And he counters 1k with Kiratsu. And I pass. He draws. Two more Dawn. So he's at five Dawn. I skipped a little bit there. Let's see what he did. Okay, he swung 5k at Pudding. It's kind of like if you get brand new and you're going against like Sakazuki or, or Moria with brand new. Definitely want to take him out. Uh, so he took Pudding out. He played Pudding to search. And I did notice, so here, I'm going to pause it a second. He he puts down the Tenkos Big Mom and he is actually a friend of mine. He's a very good player. He just plays a lot of different decks. So this is a day that he was considering playing Katakuri for regionals. So he wanted to practice. If you notice there, he drew five cards when he searched with Pudding. He just kind of mixed her up with other searchers. I forget what the other one is, like um, Tashigi or something from like the blue from OP06. So he didn't do that on purpose. He just kind of, he just kind of messed up because he's running a lot of different decks. And I didn't catch it either. When you're playing you want to watch your your opponent and see that they're doing stuff correctly don't ever just not watch them it's just something i need to practice as well if i would have corrected him it would have been fine it is what it is okay he's gonna rest three down throw a sparrow out and pass turns so i draw I think my first turn I forgot to rest a Dawn, but same deal. So add two Dawn and I was just thinking about what I was gonna do. So with four Dawn, I wonder if I swung here. Okay, so I swung five with Katakuri at lead. I don't know if I have five Dawn. I think I have four Dawn. He counters out with a Charlotte Amand. And then I rest. Oh, I, I had, yeah, there was a Dawn off screen there. So I rest five and play Gadatsu and pop his Sparrow. So when you pop his Sparrow in this case, he gets to search the top three, looking for a um, Big Mom Pirates card. He whiffed, he didn't find anything. I pass. So he does refresh, adds his dawn, draws a card, and I was just talking about how funny it would be if um, he had a Gadatsu, he popped my Gadatsu and then I got another Gadatsu, I don't know, we're just messing around. Let's see what he did. So he's going to add one dawn to Katakuri. Check a life, and then that will add 1k. So he's swinging for 7k at my leader. So he's going to look at my top life. And yeah, he moved it to the bottom. And I took this life. So remember, he was swinging 7k. And it is a beige, but I didn't want to trigger it because it's a 2k counter. And I wasn't really scared of, you know, pudding. So that's what I'm, I'm just kind of thinking. So there are cases where you don't want to use the trigger. And this is one of those cases. Just to save for later in the, the game. That counter. And it looks like he's resting four. Okay, 
and he's playing reject so reject kills a five cost sends it to your trash we were just talking about reject there for a minute and how crazy that card is that's fun card and then he's going to search with pudding you notice he messed up again searching five again he's not doing it on purpose pulls big mom so now he's got two And I actually texted him while I was editing this video, just saying, dude, uh, just kind of laughing about it. Like, dude, you were looking at five cards, but it's super funny. I take a card, add two more Dawn, searching. And now I'm at what, seven Dawn? So I'm gonna use the Lin Lin. Uh, so I swung five with um, Katakuri. And he took, and I believe he, yeah, he did not trigger. And then I rest seven. Play Lin Lin. So with that, now it's his choice whether he loses a life or I gain a life. So if I gain a life, I add it from my deck over to my life. If he loses, it goes straight to his trash and he grants me a life. So I add it from my deck over to my life. And I pass. And he draws, adds his dawn. I did a little bit, bit of a time skip here. Seeing what he's thinking. So he adds a Dawn here to Katakuri, swing in seven. And I think he might have forgot to check life. Yep, I think he, yeah, I think he forgot. Okay, and then I trigger, or I got a pudding from life. She doesn't have a trigger, so I just put her in my hand. He's attaching three Dawn. Obviously, he didn't have what he wanted in hand. Otherwise, he would be, you know, using the Dawn differently. So we have a uh, Kikunojo, and I have four life. So if I take that Kikunojo out, then it would not add a life to his life cards. It wouldn't, wouldn't add a life from his deck to his life cards. So um, that's kind of my, what I think of when I see a Kikunojo. There are cases where with yellow, you can manipulate a life and you can add one to your life and then you can take out Kikunojo. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so now I believe I'm at nine Dawn and just trying to think of what to do can see me getting a little a little crazy there. I don't remember if I swung at life or I swung at pudding. Let's see. I think I swung at life. 5k. Yep, swung at life and he uses Satori to save a life card. So he counters out. Then I'm going to drop a, a pudding. And search the top four. And what, what's in there? I don't see. I think it's a whiff. Yeah, it's a whiff. So I didn't get anything there. Luckily, I had another pudding. So I think I used her. Trying to use what I can on curve. So use nine Dawn as wisely as possible. We have another pudding. I'm looking for that uh, big mom, 10 cost. I don't think she was in my hand yet. Here looks like Charlotte Armand, 2K counter. Yep, so put her down, put the rest at the bottom of the deck. And 
add her to hand. And then at this point, I think I was thinking I was gonna do the seven drop Lin Lin, but then I thought, oh, might as well swing first, see what he does. So in this case, he takes, when I, I swung eight at his leader, he took the life and it triggered an Amaru. So he's gonna discard, I think, yeah, he's gonna discard two cards. Two of the kicking Ojos, so he can add a life from his deck over to his life. So that's one case where it's definitely good to use that on trigger, the Amaru. So here I drop the Lin Lin and say, okay, again, your choice. And this card, when you're playing against it, it really sucks when your opponent like lays it down. It's a hard choice, you know, to give them a life or take a life. It can make or break your, your game. It could be a mistake or it could be something that helps you win, but it's, it's really situational. So that's what he's doing. He's just thinking like what to do. And we we're talking about it, the situations. But I know when I play against Katakuri, I don't like to see that card. Same with Anel, you know, when they drop it, definitely don't like to see it. <clears throat> but for me, it's in some cases, I like running the ACOS Katakuri instead because you get to decide as the player and your opponent doesn't. As you see in a case like this, my opponent, my buddy is like just thinking, you know, what? What should I do? And he ends up crashing the life instead of granting me a life. Which is understandable because I was at four life and just keeps going up. Oh, and we were talking about regionals too, because we're going to be going there. This is actually part of our locals tournament, this game. And he puts the rest of his Dawn out, draws. If he has a 10 mom, he's probably going to play her. He's going to play Kick Nojo, 6k at life. A counter with Satori, the 2k counter. I think he's going to, yep, he's doing um, Katakuri at life. I have plenty of counter in hand, so I don't know if I use like the beige or the Charlotte Amand. I think I asked him what he was, what he was doing. He reminded me of swinging at it, so counter with um, beige. And now he's doing the big mom. So when this is dropped, he adds a life from his deck and I lose a life from my life cards that go straight to my trash. And I was pointing out that he took a beige from me. So he trashed a really good card for him. Definitely a good move on that part. He passed turn and then I drew the big mom. I was looking for this whole time. And I'm just thinking about what to do. One of the reasons why I took a little bit of time here and I skip, I think, part of this is that I have three life. So that Kikunojo that is sideways, if I attack it and I kill it, he gets to add a life card from his deck, you know, over to his life. So if I kill it and I have four life, he can't do that effect. So I was thinking, should I attack with Lin Lin? What should I do? And instead I play Lin Lin, which means now I'm at four life. He goes down to two, and now I can take out the Kikunojo without worrying about him gaining a life. So that's something that he's reading it. I also told him after uh, this attack, you know, after swinging eight, just saying that, you know what? I didn't even think of that until I pulled that, you know, Charlotte, the 10 drop big mom and just telling him, you know, the difference between the four and the three and how it kind of clicked, you know, sometimes when you play a deck enough stuff like that starts to click. But then I swing with Katakuri at life and he counters and then I swing eight and he takes. I think no trigger, yep, and then I pass. So if you see the board, definitely I was getting lucky 
uh, my first hand, if you saw, I ended up getting four of those seven drop moms, the big moms, which is crazy. That never happens. So I did shuffle a lot. Sometimes that you just kind of brick up in your hand. Thankfully it was with a better card. So he starts out by swinging 12 at my uh, Lin Lin and he takes it. So I send it to the trash. And then I think he was just thinking about what to do for a little bit. Don't remember what he had in his hand. He has four cards. Probably some, he might have another big mom because he swings with, with his uh, cat. And I counter with uh, Charlotte Amand. Yeah, he's resting 10, so he's got another big mom. Same deal, he adds a card, I lose a card for my life. And it's a Kikunojo, so again, would have been a good trigger for me. But is what it is. Trigger City, and he passes. Yeah, he passes turn. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on there. We had a little bit of a pause, probably talking about something. But I refresh. Move my cards over and I started thinking for a while. Because now he has two of the big moms, he has two life. There's a lot to think about here. Uh, but I have three life, so I'm in a little bit of a better spot. He does have more power on his board. But I'm going to start off by... Uh, swing in 10 because he doesn't have any blockers so I'm not sure what he got there if it was a trigger or not I think he says no trigger oh no it was a beige so the beige I'm saying oh good job dude because the beige you can stop anything else from attacking so he stops my 10 cost big mom she would have been swinging 12 he stopped it so now I was kind of like laughing, like, oh, bro, what the heck? And I have what? I had 10 down, I add one, swing seven. And I see at the top, I have a Sanji. So a Sanji blocker. Took a long time to think here. And to use the cards wisely, I think I put out another seven drop, uh, Big Mom. Let me see. Yeah, so what did I do? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I put eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm, I'm going crazy. I, for, I forgot I attached those two down to the limb lane at the top. So yeah, attach those two, attach the one to a cat, and then put Lin Lin. And we're just talking about if he has no life cards, it's the same thing. Like, I don't get anything out of it. He doesn't have to do anything. So, refresh after I pass the turn to him. I'm gonna set up his Dawn. And I think I bumped the camera a few times. So, I'm gonna skip different parts of this video because of that. He drew a card. And Lin Lin. So, he's swinging 12 at my lead. Again, sorry about the shaky camera here. I think I was sitting with my arm or something. So 12 lead, I'm just saying, oh man, I got the Sanji, so I got a, got a blocker here. And I know how he would feel at that point, because now it's like he can't really go for game. Um, because the blocker is going to stop, you know, at least one of the attacks. He could go for game if I didn't have any counter. So I think he kind of tested that from me. So I block the 12k swing with Sanji. And then I think he breaks it up with the puddings, which is the right move. Because it would take um, counter out of my hand. But definitely very difficult at this point. Because I have two, two life. So all I really need is counter and then maybe some kind of good trigger out of life. 
is going to attach three down to pudding, link five. And I have two 2Ks in hand, so I show him my Charlotte Amon 2K, counter out. And I think he does the same with the other pudding. My last card is a, oh, it's a Satori. I don't know why I thought it was a, looks like a Satori. But he was thinking for a while what he was going to do. Because now, basically, it's impossible. You can't, at least that turn, <clears throat> that turn it's impossible because if he attacks twice and he makes it, I have two life and then the last, you know, lethal, he can't, there's no way he could get it. I show him my Satori 2k, but now I'm out of cards. He's very low in his hand. So if he swings 5k, I have to take it. So I take a life, could be a trigger, I don't remember. Uh, looks like, what is it? I don't know if that was a... Don't remember what card that was. And for his last four dawn, he plays out a Sanji blocker. So I draw a card, refresh. Kind of um, organizing my board. So in this situation, I think what I was thinking is, okay, he has no life cards. If you can take out this Sanji blocker, then you can swing a ton at life. So I was just trying to think of the best way. So I attach one to Charlotte Lin Lin so that he could block it with Sanji. And then after that, it would just be the rest of the Dawn. It would be nine Dawn on one of the Lin Lins. So then that would be 17. There's no way he could you know, stop it at that point. He just said, good game. It was definitely a good game. He is a very good player. I respect him a lot. He's, he's a good friend. And we are just getting ready for regionals and just trying to decide what to play. But I hope you enjoyed that game. And I'm gonna post some more gameplay from that day. I ended up taking third in the tournament, but I hope you all enjoyed this. And I hope you're enjoying OPO6. Hope to see you again. Take care. Peace out.